Oh, I just held a human brain in my hands. It is Monday of my last week of preclinical, and that is very crazy to think about. I started medical school 16 months ago, and I had no idea what to expect. I knew it was going to be hard, and I was going to be studying a lot, but no amount of YouTube videos or podcasts could have prepared me for what I was about to go through. Fast forward to now, and it's hard to believe all of the things that we have learned over the past year or so. This is week seven of our final block of medical school, which is our neurology and psychiatry course. We've already learned most of the topics, we just have a few more psych things to wrap up this week. Today we had a lecture on schizophrenia and bipolar disorder, and on Wednesday we talk about the pharmacology for treating those conditions. We also had a problem-based learning session today, which is a little different from how we normally do them. Typically on Mondays we get a case and we discuss it in a group and try to figure out what's going on. Sometimes we'll have case extensions throughout the week where we'll get imaging or labs to help us narrow down the diagnosis. But today our session was actually an SP encounter. So instead of just reading a document, we actually had to ask the patient questions to get all of our information. We had a patient that we interviewed as a group who seemingly had schizophrenia. She was hearing voices and seeing a clown. She said that birds and squirrels were spying on her and she really hated the color red. So that was a pretty interesting experience, but I think it's good to have SP encounters like that. So we can start to learn how to interact with a patient who has delusions and hallucinations. We have a practice OSCE tomorrow and we're actually going back into the anatomy lab this week, which we haven't done in a while, but I will talk about that later. So, I just held a human brain in my hands. It's Wednesday night and I just got back from our anatomy lab. We had a neuro anatomy lab session, which is something that I've been waiting for for like over a year now. During our anatomy block, which is what the M1s are doing right now, we actually don't do a lot of neuroanatomy. We do some cranial nerves and some blood supply, but most of the neuroanatomy is left for our current block. So because of that, we don't have a neuroanatomy dissection in our anatomy block. Similar to the heart, holding a brain in your hands is one of the most special and unique things that you'll ever do in medical school. So we were all a little upset last year when we learned that we had to wait until our last course before we could have that experience. But we just did it and it was worth the wait. We had several different sections set up which highlighted different parts of the brain, like the brainstem, basal ganglia, the cerebellum. Different structures were tagged and we worked in groups to try to identify them. I can't even really begin to describe the feeling of holding a whole human brain in your hands. It's one of the most delicate and important organs in the body and it's what makes you, you. The idea that we were holding someone's whole personality, thoughts, and feelings in our hands is something that's really hard to comprehend. Like I said, we haven't been in the anatomy lab in a while, but doing that reminded me what a privilege it is to be here. We get to experience things that a very small amount of people get to. Sometimes it's easy to take that for granted because we're just focused on passing our exams. But for me, the anatomy lab has always grounded me and reminded me that being a medical student is a gift. So backing up a little bit, yesterday was our practice OSCE. We had two encounters, one psych, one neuro. Neither of them were too difficult. They were both pretty straightforward diagnoses. This psych case was a nice change of pace because there's really no physical exam component, you're just taking a very thorough history. It's nice to not have the pressure of having to do a physical. You just get to talk to the patient and get a lot more detail than you normally would. It sounds stupid, but you feel like a psychiatrist or psychologist because you get to ask the patient why they think certain things are happening or, or why they feel how they feel. So honestly, I like those encounters a little bit more than I thought I would. Tomorrow is actually a very chill day. We have a one hour lecture and then we're reviewing a mock exam that we did a few weeks ago. So hopefully it'll be a productive day. Then Friday we have a TBL in the morning and then our last small group of preclinical. <laughs> Thank you.
So it's Sunday and I'm pretty much done with all the studying I have to do for the night, so I thought I would wrap up the vlog here. Thursday and Friday were pretty chill school-wise. My small group facilitator Friday was very nice and let us go a little early because he knew that we had a lot of studying to do and didn't have too much time to do it. Friday night, I actually went and shadowed one of our professors with some of my classmates. He is the faculty advisor for our sports medicine club and kind of has like an open invitation for any student to come shadow him on the sidelines. So since last year, I've been like three or four times. It's always nice to go to games with him because I learn a lot, not only from like a medical point of view, but also just like career advice wise. He runs his own private practice. He's a team doc for some USA teams. So he's always a nice person to talk to. I actually just made a video on how to become a sports medicine physician, so if you haven't seen that, go check it out if you're interested. That professor runs a lot of the clinical skills at our school, and I actually have my OSCE tomorrow, so it was nice to be able to ask him questions and make sure I was doing everything correctly. The neuro exam is super long and it's really easy to forget parts of it. We don't get a checklist for our OSCE, so we have to commit every single step of the physical exam to memory. It hasn't been much of an issue for other blocks, but for this one, like I said, the neuro exam is just so intense. But he told us to just let the patient's symptoms guide the physical exam. After you take a good history, you should have an idea of a few things that could be going on. So your physical exam should help narrow things down and rule out certain things. So that was Friday. Yesterday and today, I've just been studying. Like I said, I have my OSCE tomorrow. I think it's gonna be three encounters, so shouldn't be too bad. Then actually our exam is on Wednesday of this week instead of Friday, which really sucks because that means we're losing two study days. The reason for that is because we have a practice step one on Friday. It's called the CBSE, your Comprehensive Basic Science Exam. We took one after our fifth block, I think, um, which was like our cardio palm and renal. Um, I think it's something that like every medical student has to take. It doesn't count for anything, but it's sort of to give you a benchmark of where you are in terms of the content that is gonna be on step one. I'm gonna be honest, I think this is the least amount of studying that I've done for an exam in medical school. There's a serious case of senioritis going around my class because we can see the light at the end of the tunnel with rotations coming up. We've all still been working hard, but when I think back to a year ago when I was studying for my anatomy final, I was studying a lot more. Maybe it's the senioritis or maybe we just got more efficient with studying. It really hasn't hit me yet that I just finished my last week of preclinical. We still have the exam looming over us, so I think once we're done with that, it'll sink in a little more. It's crazy to think that I won't really have too many more lectures in all of medical school. We do have some lectures during our rotations, but they're really just like expanding on things that we have a solid background on. They're just focusing more on specific clinical applications. I'll do a more in-depth review of my preclinical curriculum experience later on, but for now that's all I got. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.